most of the good people around here who were cures, and I wanted to be a cure too. So at that time, I became in, in 1960. I finished East Suffolk High School 1954. I went to Allen University with BS degree in 1958. I got a master's degree in health and physical education from Indiana University in 69. I joined Omega Sci-Fi in 1962 when I was arrested for trying to, well, <laughs> when I was arrested trying to integrate a F and W in Greenville. In Greenville, North Carolina. Following in, in, in Brother Hart's footsteps, uh, November 2nd, 1962, I was on the fall line uh, at North Carolina A&T College, and uh, Ronald was on the spring line of North Carolina A&T College. I felt proud. It's unusual to go to jail and be proud about it, but I was proud of what, what I was doing and what other uh, students in the uh, school was doing. It was a movement. It was a movement. And uh, had you been on the campus at that time, we were all excited. Uh, those four young men were just four uh, who, who are credited with being the leaders of that whole movement. But the reality is, it was the whole student body working together, and those young men were just out front for that time. And uh, later on, we had other brothers who moved in who took the forefront. Of that, uh, of that movement, uh, Jesse Jackson being one of them, uh, when he came down to from uh, Illinois, Southern Illinois University, and uh, it was it was an exciting time. When we really boil this down, uh, the fraternities are very similar. They are more similar than they are dissimilar, and we all stand for just about the same thing. But it is the character of the men that I saw on the campus and those men who took me under their wing and the men in my local community in Suffolk who I knew were Omega men. Uh, so that's why I chose uh, to join Omega. 80 years serving the community, um, Suffolk community, um, is tremendous. I, I, I really am proud of, of uh, what our uh, our chapter has been doing over the years. Well, I was a follower of Fred Brothers, some of the older members, and all of them, they were doctors, professors, um, principals, assistant principals. Here again, I had excellent role models. Uh, we go back to high school and we go back to the original founders of this chapter, Alpha Oda chapter. It's wonderful to be around some of those brothers who actually were founders of this chapter. Uh, William Myron Hoffman Sr. Uh, I think about Shirley Booth. I think about Sidney Estes. And Dr. A.B. Harrison uh, in Franklin. And then there was Dr. Coleman who was the dentist in town. Yes. Dr. Diggs, H.M. Diggs. And uh, we, had, we, had, we had people who were in this fraternity who could build a city. And, uh, and very much a community active. Brotherhood and all my favorite friends is what I think about them. The four cardinal principles is what I go by. I love it. For 60 years, John the Suffolk chapter in about 1965, 66. I can remember when we had one or two programs all about community uplift. You know, that was, that was a real, real kicker. We were about community uplift. Then we would add a program, we drop a program, but we were always had this commitment to uplift the community. Uh, you ask them about the four cardinal principles, which one do you see is the one that, that we practice the most? I think we have always and continue to practice community uplift. If you look at the programs now, they're not about us. They're about helping the community in any way form or fashion that we can to make sure that this community and the citizens and the people who respond to what we do uh, get the best shot at what's going on. And we do this across racial lines, across sexual lines, across economic lines, does not matter. 
and, and I would see that as, as the major contribution that we make, and we make that contribution year in and year out, and have been doing so for 80 years. I love the chapter. I love the brotherhood. And there are contributions that they have done to our community. I think that being a part of the fraternity, you develop lifelong friends. Um, and that's what I have, I, I find that is so wonderful about being a part of this organization. You develop friends and you never forget them. They have, they have had an impact on your life and hopefully you've had an impact on our life in a positive way. But these guys were the guys who were out there, who were doing things, who were committed to helping young people not only get an education, but to find themselves and to become the men that many of us hopefully have become uh, at this point in our life. I think the fraternity is stronger now, my opinion. Uh, things, we have, we have grown in the sense that we we do more of the four cardinal principles. For an example, we we now have adopted a, a mentor program where we actually tr trying to train kids from sixth grade to twelfth grade manhood characteristics. And we want to build that manhood situation with our young poor folks. Uh, I don't think we had that mentorship program during our early days. I, 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 that was one of the things that I I think it's real strong with our fraternity today. Like many years ago, we were paying $500 for scholarship. We're now doing $3,000 plus for scholarship now. Uh, shows the progress that we're making. We're uplifting more. We are serving the wives of brothers who have passed away, gone to a mega chapter. Perseverance, well, the pandemic explains all of that. Uh, we are going to persevere the pandemic. Uh, what we have been able to do this past year, even though there has been a pandemic, I think our bossless dish, this present bossless, uh, John Cotton, has done an excellent job uh, doing the work of Omega. I had the, the privilege and the honor to have uh, known two of the founders, uh, to been in their presence and to listen uh, like all of the young bucks who were sitting around the table when they were talking uh, uh, about the early days, the Treacle Hall, the early days of Howard University, uh, the early days of the fraternity and why I got started and what it was supposed to be about. And if they were alive today, one, they would all be activists. They would be activists in the movement uh, for human rights. They would be activists in the movement for economic parity. They would be activists in uplifting the community. Uh, it's sort of like dropping a rock in the water, and as you see, the concentric circles move out and out and out until they cover up everybody. Uh, that's what we're here for. We're here to help others. And in the process, you help yourself, but we're here to help others.